When working on assignments for your college courses, you will be asked to provide proper citations for the sources you used. Citations are important for a variety of reasons. Citing your sources allows you to give credit to others' works and ideas, it helps you avoid plagiarism and academic dishonesty, and it also gives your readers the information they need to track down and access the sources that you used. Luckily, the MLA Style Guide was recently updated to meet the information needs of today. It provides a standard way of creating citations for different types of sources, and it requires using both in-text citations and a works cited list. First, let's focus on in-text citations. So what is an in-text citation? In MLA, whenever you reference another person's work in your own text, you give them credit by placing the source information in parentheses at the end of the sentence. This allows your reader to connect the information you are using to the full citation in your works cited list. You use in-text citations in two situations. The first one is when you directly quote someone's words in your own text, like here. Notice that when you do this, you include quotation marks around the quote you are using from your source. The second situation is when you reference or paraphrase their work, like we do here. Because we aren't quoting directly, there's no need for quotation marks. However, in both of these cases, you still need to include the in-text citation information. Let's take a closer look at how that's done. There are several ways to go about creating your in-text citations, and it all depends on whether or not you include the author's name in your sentence. If you refer to something from a source without using the author's name, like this, we give credit by putting their last name in parentheses at the end of the sentence, followed by the page number where the information comes from. If you do use the author's name within the sentence, like this, then you only include the page number or numbers in parentheses. Pretty easy, right? Okay, now let's focus on creating the citations for a works cited. A works cited is basically a list of all the sources that you referenced in your paper that comes at the end of your assignment. When creating citations for sources, it's important to understand some of the new concepts and terms that MLA 8 uses. The goal of MLA 8 is to have a broad template that can be used for any type of content. To do this, MLA refers to items as either a source or a container. Sources are the actual work that you are citing, such as books, articles, or videos. A container is the larger work that contains the source you are using, such as a journal or magazine, a database or website. Sources can have more than one container, depending on how you access the information. For example, an article you found in a library database would have two containers, one for the journal it was published in, and one for the database you found it in. If it helps, you can think of sources and containers as nesting dolls, with the source being the smallest of the dolls, the journal the middle one, and the database as the largest one. To help you create a citation, MLA has identified common traits, or core elements, that most sources share. These elements include author, title of source, title of container, other contributors, version, number, publisher, publication date, and location. Using these core elements will allow you to create a citation in MLA format for practically any type of source. There are a few things to remember though. Number one, not all sources will have every element. If there are some elements missing from your source, just omit them in your citation. Some elements may be repeated depending on the number of containers. In these cases, elements number three through nine will repeat for each additional container needed. Each element is separated by the punctuation shown on the chart. So when you are putting your citation together, just refer back to the chart to see if you need a period or a comma. Lastly, there may be more than one way to document a source. Always check with your instructor for specifics. Okay, now let's take a look at some examples. 
Here we are trying to create a citation for the book The Hunger Games. To locate all the information we need, we will be looking at both the title page and the copyright page of the book. Using the table from earlier, we can start filling in the core elements from this source, starting with the author and working our way down the list. Remember, not every element is going to be used, so if you don't find information for that element, just omit them. Once you have all the information gathered, now you can put the citation together. The citation for this source would look like this. Okay, let's look at another example. This time, let's focus on creating a citation for an article from a scholarly journal that we found through one of the library's databases. In this case, we will have two containers, one for the journal and one for the database. Start with the information from the article, and let's list the author's name, and then the title of the article in quotation marks. Next, let's gather the information we need from the journal, starting with the journal name in italics, and working our way down the list. Now, we need to fill in the information for our second container, the database. List the database name for the title, in this case it's Academic Search Complete, and a permalink or stable URL for the location. In most databases, you will find a place that will give you a, this URL to copy. Do not copy the URL from the address bar. Once again, if there are any missing elements, just omit them from your citation. Once you have all the information gathered, now you can put the citation together. The citation for this source would look like this. When all your citations are created, you will need to make sure that your works cited list is formatted properly. First, make sure to list all of your citation entries in alphabetical order. If your citation is more than one line, only the first line should be aligned to the left margin. All additional lines should be indented. Lastly, make sure that your list is double spaced. To learn more about MLA citations, feel free to check out a copy of the MLA 8 handbook at any Sanjak Library location, or take a look at our citation research guide at sjcd.libguides.com. And as always, if you need additional help, ask a librarian.